Meet us and we begin the meeting. Bill, Bill, good to see you. Don't hide behind that. We may, we may need you in a minute. Don't hide behind that call. Okay. Okay, the uh, Monday, August 6, 2012 meeting of the Lexington County Republican Party Executive Committee will come to order. First, we'll have invocation by Chaplain Lyman Whitehead. Lyman. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you've given of us. We ask that you guide and direct us through the coming days. We ask that you be with this meeting and help us to do the right thing. We ask that you guide and direct us to get everybody out to the polls and get a good elected president of this United States. We ask that you be with our military, especially those in harm's way. We ask that you be with the families that were murdered in these two shooting instances we've had. And we ask that you bless us all in the coming days and we ask that you guide and direct us to get back to good Judeo-Christian living. We ask that you bless us all in the coming days. And these and all our many, many blessings we ask in our great son, Jesus Christ's name. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Change. So I'm going to leave it at that. 
there's a lot more I'd like to say, but what I won't. Um, recognition of elected officials. And I've got a list here, but I did see uh, Todd out, Todd out, Mark, Todd. And, uh, Todd is wet, just like me. I have my umbrella. Uh, here, Todd. He's already dried off. Uh, Mac Tool. Mac. Mac is aged since I saw him last year. Mac, thanks for coming. <laughs> thanks, Thank you, Steve. <laughs> well, it's been a long time. You know, Mac, Mac. Kit Spires. Kit. Uh, District 96. 96. 96. Um, let's see. Todd is uh, House uh, 87. Max 88. Uh, we also have. Uh, oh. Uh, we, we've got the representatives for our corner in the back. Is he here with us? If, if y'all give, give our give a call to our uh, official Republican candidate for Lexington County Corner and uh, come back to breakfast with us anytime. And thanks for being here. Also, uh, let's see, Sheriff Metz here? I don't see him out there. Usually he's here. Uh, Jim Extra, our treasurer. Jim? I didn't recognize Jim because he had a, he's got a little growth going on there. Uh, Jim, I think they've got those 27 blade razors now you can purchase for uh, Well, you know, have I missed anyone? Did I miss anyone? Elected officials? Okay. All right. Uh, I got a phone call about 10 minutes before, before I drove into this meeting over in Columbia from Rich Bowling. He had to cancel his presentation, the 10 minute presentation. He will be here next month with this analysis of Obamacare, which is about 10 minutes. Uh, next, I've already read the email from, from Bill Sheely. But Bill and Bruno Sheely, Lifetime Membership Award. Um, I'd like to have the former chairman, Lyman Whitehead, Tommy Windsor, uh, Katrina Sheely, uh, Rich is not here, of course, come up to the front and say a few brief words about Verona and Bill Sheely. Uh, and, you know, this, from what I can tell, they're the heart and soul of behind the scenes Lexington County Republican Party for the last several years. Lyman? Ladies first. Ladies first. Well, that must be me. <laughs> well, I think, can we get Bill and Verona to move up this way? So, I mean, I'd like for them to be up here. So I can at least see them. Because they're kind of coming home that way. Bill wants to stay here. Yeah, I'm just going to stay here. Okay, well, I'll wave at you every now and then. <laughs> well, Bill and Verona know that they're very special parts of the Lexington County Republican Party. Um, Verona actually got me started probably in the Republican Party when I got started with the uh, West Metro Republican Women. I think that was 10 years ago, coming into Monday. So uh, we're going to celebrate next Monday, by the way, for all of y'all that are members of the West Metro Republican Women, and if you're not, you can come anyway. But uh, Verona's very near and dear to my heart. Everybody thinks we're sisters. So everybody always says, are y'all kin? We tell everybody we are. But uh, Verona's, very, Verona's very special to me, and, and so is Mr. Bill, and they mean a lot to everybody in this Republican Party. Y'all know, know that they're the heart and soul of the Republican Party. Is. As long as I can remember, Ms. Verona's always sat up here and told all of us what to do. And, uh, she'd still come tell us. I said it was bad. I said she just told us what to do. You kept us straight. Because without her, we would have got, we would have messed up a lot of things. We would have got a lot of things done. And uh, this party probably would have gotten a lot of things done right last time if we had Ms. Verona tell us what to do. So uh, we appreciate her, and I'm gonna let Tommy come or talk or Lyman, and then I'll read this right before. We give, we give this to them. Roy Bill, it's an honor for me to stand up here and thank you all for all the service that you've given to this party in this county over the years. Uh, my daddy told me, he said, son, when you make an appointment to be somewhere, you are the one that's not to be late. You got an appointment at 6 o'clock, you'll be there at 5 minutes to 6. And I never could beat them. To the <laughs> and they were there when we needed them. They were there when we got there. They were there when we left. We needed good advice, and, and you wanted good advice. Now, if you didn't want it, don't ask for it because they're going to give you their opinion. It might not be what you wanted, but you knew it was coming from the heart. And so, again, I say thank you. Well, I, I pretty much told you all about what I think about Bill and Verona. You know, 
Lyman said that uh, uh, if you don't want their opinion, you know, don't ask for it because it'll come from the heart. Well, you know, I was only 25 when I became chairman of the county Republican Party, so sometimes Bill and Verona gave me their advice, and I didn't ask for it. Because <laughs> Verona thought I was doing something wrong, and when she did, she'd tell me. And she'd call me up, and she'd let me know, and she kept me in line. And so, you know, uh, it's... You know, I had I had my real mom, and then I had my second mom who made sure that I, I was I was doing what I was supposed to, and 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 staying in line. And you know, if I ever needed anything done as chairman, all I had to do was pick up the phone and dial seven nine six nine seven nine seven. And I remember that phone number to this day, and I will remember it till the day I die because I dialed it so many times, and it showed up on my caller ID so many times because they are the reason why, if I have any success as chairman of the Lexington County Republican Party, it is due to Bill and Verona Sheely and all the work that they helped me do. Uh, and I can't say enough about Bill and Verona, and you know, this is, while this is a, a, you know, something that we can say, and you give to them and say thank you for what you've done, I don't think there are enough certificates. I don't think there's enough plaques. I don't think there's enough honors for people like Bill and Verona Sheila. And I'm just grateful that I know them. I'm grateful to call them friends of mine, and I'm grateful that they are members of the Lexington County Republican Party. Let's give them a pause. to William, Bill, and Verona Sheely. Whereas the Republican Party is dependent on people of strong moral character with unwavering patriotism and a dedication to protecting the family and promoting personal responsibility. Whereas William, Bill, and Verona Sheely exemplify those qualities and having served as outstanding examples of exceptional Republican grassroots, grassroots leadership. Whereas Bill and Verona Sheely have been dedicated volunteers to the local, state, and national Republican Party and have donated countless hours of time and effort to strengthen the party and helping elect Republican candidates to office, whereas both individually and as a couple, Bill and Verona have been bestowed the Republican Party's most prestigious awards and honors in recognition for their superior service, be it therefore resolved that a lifetime membership to the Lexington County Republican Party be conferred, conferred upon Bill and Verona Sheely in grateful appreciation for their lifetime of service. And you can present it to her. Well, thank you very much. Let's, let's give her a round of applause. For Chairman, I wish I had the same experience you had. Uh, I've heard so much uh, in terms of good goodness about Bill and Verona Sheely, and I visited with them at the hospital a couple weeks ago and learned a lot about the background here at Lexington County. So, uh, thank you, thank you, Bill. Next, we have a, uh, a special guest from the South Carolina GOP, 
uh, Delinda Ridings. Um, Delinda's going to come up and talk talk about what's happening with the GOP Delinda. And I tell you, she's had a tough job. Uh, all of you know about the Supreme Court rulings and all the fiascos around the state, which is still going on, <coughs> by the way. Not here as much, but Delinda, come up and tell us the, the positive news about the SCGOP. I will. I will. I see any greetings from our chairman, Chad Connolly, who couldn't be here. He's on a well-deserved vacation. He'll be back at the end of the week. But Matt Moore, our executive director, also called right before I left and said, what are you going to say? Okay. And so um, we're very careful what we say these days. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, he wishes he could be here too. He sent a couple of meetings tonight, so he's not home either. We have kind of split up. Um, I have come here, and I was very happy to come, and Hope Walker went to the Ron Paul event with Senator Davis, and Matt had a couple of meetings downtown, and Chad's on vacation. So anyway, I bring greetings from everybody at the state party, and the reason that I am here is to talk just briefly about victory. Um, we're getting started. We're pre-opening our office. The office is going to be upstairs at the state party headquarters. And um, that's where I am. I'm also doing some <laughs> grassroots efforts on behalf of the South Carolina Republican Party. And we're going around talking to all of the political organizations and clubs um, at their various monthly meetings and wanting you involved. At the back table, I brought a sign-up sheet. And when you put your name on that sheet, you can also go on our website at scgop.com. It will also... Um, make you a Palmetto Patriot. A Palmetto Patriot is a new pro program that's very dear to Chad's heart. He has given me the responsibility of building this thousand man army and we're going to be traveling into the swing states but we're also going to be staying at home. There's lots of work to do right here in South Carolina as well as in North Carolina, Virginia, Ohio, Florida. So um, I need your help. This past Saturday on August 4th, we took 30 Palmetto Patriots into Charlotte. We made phone calls from 9 o'clock to 12 o'clock, then moved over into another part of North Carolina and opened one of their victory offices. So we're very, very excited to help our neighbors to the north. And then last week, um, I went to a fundraiser for one of the senators in um, uh, Virginia. Sorry, I was thinking about something else. And um, they have just, his wife has just have opened 26 offices in Virginia. So um, he made me promise that we would have bands coming in there, and I will. So I, what I've done is I've already gotten people in charge of the different states. So you tell me when you go to SCGOP, sign up for Palmetto Patriots, or you can sign up on the board tonight. And when we call you or we send you an email and say it's time, can you go here? And you say, no, I can't go there, but I'll be glad to go here. Then I'm going to put you on that list because I already have people in all of the states ready to head up those bands. Um, so I just need your help. And then, like I said before, we have candidates here in South Carolina. We're not forgetting about our own. South Carolina is very important. I don't consider us a swing state like you've heard on the news. We're going we're gonna to elect Romney. All nine of our electorals are going to Romney, and I, I'm very sure about that. But we have Senate races and we have House races that's very important, and we're going to need your help to make sure that those are elected Republicans. Um, and also, I brought you a little Cersei. Um, these are our South Carolina Republican Party bumper stickers. I have a stack on the back table. We finally got in our Romney bumper stickers. I only have a few of these, and I have um, some palm cards that I bought those, brought those too. Now, you can come by my office and get you know more, and I'll share with you what I have, but we're still waiting on more. And as far as the yard signs, they're not here. I really don't expect the yard signs to come in till post convention, and once the VP has been named, we're probably waiting on printing for those. So, and the other thing that I am pushing and pushing hard is voter registration. I have some of these with me tonight, and I have more at the office, and you're welcome to come by my office and pick those up, or you can go, you know, to your election commission and pick those up. But anyway, this is important. 
I had um, two or three particular clubs out this past Wednesday on Chick-fil-A Day registering voters. The South Carolina Republican Party in um, cooperation with Myrtle Beach Tea Party, Carolina Patriots, and um, uh, Republican women of Golden Strip in the upstate, we registered over 220 folks last Wednesday during Chick-fil-A Appreciation Day. So we are working hard because the Democrats are out. They're alive and they're very well. And they are into voter fraud. I have a friend that um, travels a lot with me on the weekends when we go to Isla Palms. And weekend before last when we went, she said her husband is in Afghanistan and her children are the same age as two of mine. And so we go together and she said, Delinda, I had something happen to me. And I said, what was it, Beth? She said, I got a voter registration card from Florida. I haven't lived in Florida in five years. And it's the exact address where we sold the house. But I have a voter registration card in Florida and I have one in South Carolina now. And so they are very, they're very active and they're, they're working on voter fraud. So um, just beware. And I need your help in making sure that our voters get registered and that um, they also understand how we need them to vote. Um, and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to call our office. You can call the main number and they can transfer you to me because I'm upstairs. Or if you have any questions tonight, I'll be around for a little while and I'll be glad to answer those. And um, once again, oh, and I wanted to tell you about a kickoff that we're having. We have two kickoffs. On August 20th um, in Spartanburg, Rick Santorum will be here to help us kick off the Upstate Victory Office um, and our Victory Program in the Upstate, and that's at 6 o'clock at night. The other one, we're still working on the dates, but I think it's going to be September 6th, to, the place to be determined yet, but that will be our main Victory kickoff and our unity. because. Guys, it's time for us to unify. Today I was talking to some people, to some chairmen of other counties, and they're really concerned because lawsuits are still coming around. Do you know what that's doing to our party? Do you know what that's doing to Victory? That's taking money out of my Victory fund to where it's going to be hard for us to elect Republicans because there's not going to be any money to help you. So it's time for us to unify. And it's time for us to get behind one candidate. And it's time for us to remember that the more we have infighting in this party, the less victorious we're going to be. So um, I just ask for your unity and I ask for your help. And thank you so much, Steve, for letting me come. Thank you. Let's give her a round of applause. Thank you. I think most of us agree that we need to unify and move, move forward. We, we've got, we need to actually talk about issues. Well, next, I've got a um, report, brief report on membership numbers. And one of the things we did in the steering committee meeting at the last meeting is I asked each officer up here to have a new paid member come into the Lexington County Republican Party. And I emphasized new paid member. And I said, if they can't be here, make sure you've got their money and their membership form. And there's a bunch of those in the back. I think it's about 40 of them in the back. So make sure you pick up these membership forms before you leave tonight. And, I, uh, we have Casey, Casey Precinct 3 is organized, and I happened to uh, come across a gentleman who used to be involved with the Teenage Republicans years ago when Barry Goldwater was around. John R. Miles is the person I've recruited into the Republican Party. He'll be here next month. And John Miles uh, gave me the cash, $24 for sustaining membership. Now, this name I can't pronounce, and I don't mind telling you that. And Jerry, I talked to Jerry, and, and Jerry's here tonight. You had to only embarrass you. I'm going to attempt to say this to your name, okay? Godosky. Godosky. Is that close, Jerry? Close enough. Close enough. Yeah. Oh, Jerry, right. Jerry, stand up. Everybody see you. <laughs> Jerry's a new member. This is new member. <laughs> and so I don't want to embarrass any of our officers, but. Good. Okay. <laughs> Y'all have your, uh, your members, your names, uh, at least one name. Tom, you've got one. Yeah, I'll just leave like that. You don't have to have one. Craig? Craig has one, right, Craig? Yeah, I've actually got two. They're family, and if you can get any money out of them, they're both pretty cheap. But um, <laughs> both of them, one um, conferred for a platinum membership, and the other one a family membership. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah. You don't need that. You didn't have anybody. 
Okay, here's what we're going to do. Next month, I'm going to ask every precinct representative to bring at least one person, a new paid member, to the party, just like we, we've done. So next month, I want you to come in with at least one person. You represent your precinct, whether you're a president or executive committee member, get them at least forms or ask them to get online, send emails out, so one, one paid member to come into the party. If you can get them here, that'd be great. And because uh, we need to get membership up and get the conservative message out. Now, I'm gonna go over some numbers with you. When, when I assumed uh, chairmanship, Rich Bowen gave me four years worth of past data. I went through that data, data in the last couple of days. In 2009, we had, and I'm basing this on unique records. I know uh, some people look at a, let's say a family membership, uh, as how many people live in the household and do the counts that way. But in other words, if a baby's born, the count goes up, we don't know about it. So I just based it on the number of records in the, in the database, in the spreadsheet. So in 2009, there were 136 unique records, 136 paid members. 2010, 100. 2011, 86. And in 2012, when I first received this, this database, it was 94. Now we have 120 paid members and we picked up 10% in the last two months. So we're up 28% since the beginning of the year, which is not bad. But I feel like we can do a lot better. Let me give you some demographics. Uh, we have several categories. We have the family gold, uh, golden, life, platinum, sustaining. The, the two categories where we have 74% of the population is in family and sustaining membership. So 29% come from family memberships and we have 35 individuals, uh, records in that category. We have 54 records in sustaining membership. That's 45%. And I've got the dollar figures here. Next month, I'll, I will uh, probably, around December, I'll give you the, the rundown because I'm expecting a, a big increase next month. So um, we, we can look at having more resources to give out to some of the young people who want to be involved, uh, whether it's at, at Tampa, or some of the, we're going to have one young fellow speak here in the meeting briefly. He wanted an hour, but I said no, a couple minutes. We'll give him a couple hours to speak. But uh, the, the demographics are looking up and things are looking up for us, even in these hard times. So um, for September, I'm requesting that one new paid member be added to the Election Candidate Republican Party by the leadership of each of the precincts. If you are a precinct president or executive committeeman, you will have at least one. <laughs> new paid membership form completed and payment delivered at the next regular meeting of Washington County Republican Party, which is now scheduled, let me mention this, Monday, September 3rd is Labor Day. We can't meet the first Monday next month. So, and Tuesday I have my CK, the Casey Council meeting, like a lot of municipalities. Wednesday's church night. So, I mentioned this to several of you and Thursday seemed like a good night, but I know one person is going to another meeting. But if, if it's okay with y'all, we'll talk about this later. I'm thinking Thursday, the 6th of September, I saw one thumbs down. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that toward the end. We'll talk about that more, but we'll be thinking about that. So, um, at any rate, because, and, and okay, that finishes up my, my comments about <coughs> And I do have some charts here, detailed graphs and charts. I'll be glad to show you, but I think. After next month, after we get a little stabilization in numbers, uh, we'll, we'll have some more charts out, give you a definitive breakdown on the populations. Now, Craig Caldwell was just elected our first vice chair, and I've asked Craig to do a lot. And in the real world, people have jobs and other responsibilities. So I want to I want to tell you that that Craig, I asked him to to uh, because we have a couple of people absent. The chairman of the precinct reorganization committee is absent, lead candidate. So I asked Craig several days ago to do a report in place of lead candidate. And there's time constraints. There's a meeting tomorrow, I understand. I think he'll be going to that. But Craig's going to give you a brief overview of what's, what's happened with the reorganization committee. They've done a lot of work. And um, listen to what Craig has to say. Craig? All right. Um, I wasn't able to attend the last reorganization meeting. was out in town due to work. Didn't make it back in time. but. Um, Lee Candidate, who is our chairman of the reorganization committee, due to some projects he's got uh, going on, he has asked Nicole Quinn to kind of administrate the re reorganization effort, and she's going she's to be the main point of contact as of right now. 
Nicole Quinn is. Both of them couldn't attend tonight. They're uh, with the um, fundraiser downtown, so um, they hated they couldn't be here. And also Debbie Griffin, who was mentioned before, she kept the meeting minutes from that meeting, and she's been sick. So um, to update on the meeting, there's been some challenges. They've got some voter record CDs. The voter record had the contact, the names, however, it had no phone. And um, so we gotten some new software system to help extract the phone identification so we can use them as a call and list to follow up on. That's been a work in progress. So that's one of the frustrations efforts that we've had. But um, we want to give kudos to Patrick Donnellan. He's been uh, we work, reworking that system and by precinct by precinct and getting the good contact call out um, information for that. Um, there is a special event tomorrow night for the reorganization efforts. Um, thanks to Ms. Walter, she's agreed to let us meet at the campaign headquarters, her campaign headquarters to do some calling, try to organize. Of the 92 precincts in Lexington County, we have 16 that is unorganized. And our plan is to have them organized by September, if we can. And I'll just read a list of the 16 unorganized precincts. One's West Columbia 2, West Columbia 3, Casey 3, Bowling Springs, Lee Park, Chalk Hill, Gaston 1, Summit, Park Road 1, Swansea 1, Swansea 2, Drear Island, Congaree 2, Ridge Road, and Mac Edisto precincts. So if you know of anybody in any of those precincts, please give them our information. Um, Ms. Quinn's number of contact, if you want to help out, this is a good way to help out the party, to grow the party, also to get some of these other precincts organized. Her phone number, if you have a pen, is 529-2350. Um, you can also contact Steve or myself. We'll give you your email address and other contact information if necessary. So if anybody can help, be at Ms. Walter's campaign headquarters between 5 and 8 tomorrow night to help out some calling and see if we can't contact some of these organized precincts, get people involved. Craig, thank you. And, and look, that was his first presentation. Just give him a round of applause. That was good, Craig. <laughs> well, uh, next, let's, uh, there's something, this is probably the, the, one of the most important and somewhat controversial issues we have tonight. This is the second reading of the resolution to support uh, Republican petition candidates. Most of it, there's copies in the back. We went over this last month. Do I need to read this again or not? Okay. Read it again? Okay. Whereas State Party Rule 5E5 states, quote, should any officer or delegate publicly endorse or financially support a candidate for partisan office other than a duly nominated Republican candidate, comma, unless there is no Republican nominee in the relevant race, comma, they shall immediately vacate the Republican Party office, period. Whereas State Party Rule 5E5 further permits quote, the county executive committee may waive this provision for their county and less than county elections, period, end quote. Whereas the state Supreme Court decisions in Anderson and, comma, again in Florence County, comma, calls the removal of candidates attempting to run for office as Republicans. Whereas Republicans believe in voters having choices at the ballot box, comma, and those choices should not be inhibited by court decisions, period. Therefore, Comma, be it resolved that the Lexington County Republican Party Executive Committee waives any castigations and or negative actions under SEGOP Rule 5B5 for any delegate or officer who publicly endorses or financially supports a petition candidate who attempts to file but was not certified in the 2012 Republican Party primary period. This rule will impact the 2012 election cycle only period. The, uh, Chair would, would entertain a motion to approve the resolution. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor stand.
All those opposed, please stand. All those opposed to this resolution, please stand. Three. Okay, that's three we had against it last time, I believe. Okay, thank you. We, have the, we do have a four, right? Yes, we do. Okay. Yes. Um, Mickey, I would ask you to ask for recognition from the chair next please, time. Sir, may I ask a question? Yes, ma'am. We do have a four. Yes, ma'am. And the resolution is that we can support and negate any. The, the, the resolution as read is pretty clear. Okay. So okay. We don't, we're not the resolution to support. So the resolution has been approved. Let's move, let's move forward. And, and I think that was important to, to do that. Uh, I understand both sides of the argument, but this is very important. Um, now, next is, a, is I think it's also important. Uh, we only have a, a few clear races in Lexington County, one of which is a Republican versus a Democrat. We have D.D. Bodders against it, who has a Democratic challenger. And um, at our steering committee last uh, last week, we have uh, approved uh, monetary support for D.D. Bodders. Um, at this time, I'd like the party officers to come down to the front and stand with me. And uh, we want to uh, present with uh, D.D. Bodders with a $1,000 check for her efforts against the Democratic challenger. <laughs> Instead of me using Rule 2A, I won't do that again. I'll right now. How many people are opposed? Raise your hand. You're opposed to giving a thousand dollars to the only Republican in the party. We've got the vote on it. Any change to that? Madam, you're out of order. If, if you do that again, I'll ask you to leave the room. Okay. My question is this: I want you to raise your hand if you're opposed to giving a thousand dollars to Dee Dee Bothers, the only Republican challenger in this race. Okay. That's clear. Everyone's in favor. Does the rules say that? by the Aiken County GOP monetarily and it is wonderful feeling to have both Aiken and Lexington behind me in this. Uh, Calhoun counties and um, and also uh, Saluda County there's a very small portion of those counties I don't know if you've ever been to a GOP meeting there but they have about five people in those four little counties so they are behind me as well they're working for me I have mayors I have executive committeemen and we're all pushing this train and I want to thank you a lot of you didn't stand up here, and I understand, you know, I, I understand, but I know because you've called me, you've reached out, you've volunteered, you've written me checks, 
And most people in this room that I'm looking out here today have worked for my campaign already. And if not, if not before the primary, they certainly have since June 12th. I promise you that every day, every day that I'm on the trail, and I'm going to win this race, and every day that I'm in the Senate, I'm going to make you proud. You're going to say that is a true conservative. And if you have been by my campaign office, you know that right above, in my office in the back, my personal office inside the campaign office, right above the light is the Republican creed. Because if ever I want to know, wait a minute, this doesn't smell right, then I just read the Republican creed and I said, because it's not right. And every day I will be the social and physical conservative that you guys want representing you in the Senate. And I'll make you proud. You will never be sorry you supported me. But I'm going to take this opportunity today to recognize my number one volunteer and supporter, because most of you have asked this question, where is your husband? He is never with you. We have a 12-year-old, a 9-year-old, and a 4-year-old. And my husband is with our children so I can be here doing what I need to do every day. He's the one picking them up, running them to camp, doing the homework, making sure they eat. And when I said, I think I want to do this, he said, I'll never forgive you if you don't. It is time that we don't have a 36-year incumbent Democrat represent us. So Bauer Waters, my biggest volunteer, if you'll stand up, he does exist. It's like the Red m and m commercial and the you know, Santa Passage. Oh, they do exist. And so anyway, that's Bauer. You've seen him in photographs. And now um, take the time to go by. And if you will, thank him for really, he's the one. He's there so I can be here. And thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, Judy. Bauer, thank, thank you. Okay, next, um, this Notice how fast we're going through this. This is amazing. We're, 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 going, we're going to have a, a oral record set here as far as any of the meeting. Uh, next, we have our treasurer before. And notice our treasurer is not here. He's in Destin, Florida. But he's passed the torch to, to Wilma Story. And Wilma's going to give us a report, Wilma? I did not know I was to be on the agenda, and I did not state any 
complaint. So I did speak, but it was not on that subject. So Madam Secretary, if you can make that change. I would say I would say the record of this meeting would be a correction to that meeting and be recorded. Make that recording of this meeting if you will. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, sir. And Carla. Okay, yours too. Okay. Okay. Um, officers report. Now, Craig's already given his report. Tom, you have anything to report this time? We have a meeting coming up, I think, on the eighteenth. Yeah, our next quarterly meeting is August 18th, and uh, our chairman has kept us posted on the sad lawsuits that Linda uh, mentioned. And uh, we have the news that Governor Haley will be speaking, uh, according to the newspaper, at the, at the uh, National Convention in August, uh, later in August. So, well, uh, next we've got new business, and I will tell you that I, had, I was making changes to the agenda up until a few hours before I had to make copies and even then I had more changes. I had requests come in and we have Kendall McCarty uh, who, who wants to who wants to speak an hour or three minutes. Kendall come on up. <laughs> Ken, you know remember we, we gave Kendall money to go to one of these conferences here recently. Kendall's going to tell us how efficiently and effectively he used the money and what he learned at that conference. Thank you. Um, as you probably know y'all gave contributions almost completely paid for my entire conference today. Um, while in Washington, D.C. at the National Teenage Republican Leadership Conference on July the 16th through the 21st, we heard from guest speakers such as Senator Jim DeMint of South Carolina, Congressman Paul Ryan, Congresswoman Michelle Bachman, and Congressman Aaron Sopp. I also had the chance to personally meet with Senator Jim DeMint Congressman Ron Paul, Congressman Joe Wilson, and Congressman Alan West. Activities that we took part in were leadership training, social media outreach campaign training, growing your club and cl a club advisor roundtable where we got to sit down with different advisors from across the country. Um, also, the five of us who attended the meeting with Congressman Joe Wilson were invited by him in a were invited by him and attended a congressional reception to celebrate the liberation of Guam. If you would like to see pictures from this conference or a the video from the conference, you can see it on our website, which is www.lexingtontars.weebly.com. And also, I've seen um, Chairman Eisen's series of video on his Facebook page. Um, the website www.lexingtontars.weebly.com. Um, also, I would like to ask if there is any way can our website be linked. Website, so people have access to that. Sure, I'll, I'll put a link in there for you. Thank you. Sure. Um, right now, we're um, as I get back from this conference, where I was the only one from South Carolina again to attend. So we're trying to grow our membership in Lexington County. So we're doing a a club drive. So if anyone's interested in helping us with that, or you know someone who would like to join our club, please see me or contact me. Um, I'll give you one of my cards with all my contact information. And that is all. I would like to thank you for your continuous support of me as well as my organization, the South Carolina Federation of Teenage Republicans. I would like to thank you from the Executive Committee of the South Carolina Federation of Teenage Republicans as well as the Lexington County Teenage Republicans. It's time to educate the teenagers of Lexington County, the teenagers of South Carolina, and the teenagers of the United States of America about the Republican Party. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think that was money well spent for the future of the party. Um, another piece of new business that someone called me about, emailed me about today is, remember last month we had such a long agenda we had to move the time up to 6.30 instead of 7. So but I had a couple of people who really wanted to move back to 7, and other people said they really liked it at 6.30, so we need to decide if we're going to be at 6.30 or 7. So if, if you would like to uh, 
meet at 6.30, raise your hand. Let's let me, if you want to keep meeting at 6.30, raise your hand. Okay. All right. How many of you would like to meet at 7? Raise your hand. Okay. 6.30 is happening. That's good. So we'll meet at 6.30. Okay. Now let's go back to uh, scheduling. We're talking about time, scheduling issues for Labor Day. Is there any other dates you want to meet other than Thursday, the 6th of September? Off that she wasn't sure the date, but she thought September the 6th was September 6th. The when is that right? Delinda, is that right? Excuse me, she was. What time is that? It hasn't been finalized yet. We're still looking for venues and we're still working on it. Okay. As soon as I get all that, I'll shoot it straight to you. Katrina, I saved you that time because a suggestion came up the following Monday the 10th yes, and I already had a note from you yes, saying sir. that was a conflict with your women's group. Right. Right. So that, that'd be a conflict. Any other suggestions if you don't, I mean, it, it, can we tentatively leave it at, in, in case I hear, Delinda, in case I hear something different, we'll, we'll tentatively leave it for Thursday and if, if you come out and tell me that it's a conflict, I'll send an email out to everybody, y'all can decide. How's that? So the, uh, the next meeting for next month, the first Monday. Well, do y'all not want to have a meeting in September? Well, we've got, we've got a lot of politicians that haven't been able to speak on the issues because we've been involved with all the other controversies. But, uh, uh, me. Um, I really think with, with this close to the election, we need to meet in September. And the sixth, if we can coordinate, why don't you see? I, send us a well, I, I agree with the point that we've got. We're, we're so close to. I feel like we've been off target so long that we need to meet. But that's up to the executive committee, Bill. Okay. Is there a second? Second. All in favor, raise your hand. What was it? All opposed. Couldn't hear them. Okay. Well, yeah. so we'll tentatively have it on September 6th, Thursday, September 6th. Mr. Chairman, I, excuse me, I had raised my hand to be recognized. I didn't, I didn't see you. I didn't see you, Tom. Before the motion had been made, and I was just going to suggest that maybe we do it on the 10th, keep it on a Monday. Because there's a, that's what I just talked about. There's conflict with the women's, uh, Republican women. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, never mind. Excuse me. Sure, sure. Uh, okay. No wonder I got stepped off the ballot. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Tom. Uh, okay, let's get to uh, announcement and public comment. Uh, let me say this first. I got a, a text message from Ross Snell. Uh, notice Ross is not here tonight. He had a death in the family just a few minutes before I got here. So y'all have to keep Ross in your prayers tonight. Ross Snell. Death of family. Um, and Debbie Griffith was sick and she made every effort to be here. And Michael, I know I said this before, but I know you're here. Thanks for volunteering to do all the work outside tonight. Michael Calvert, thank you. Okay, um, announcements, public comment. Anyone have an announcement? Uh, Craig Adams, in fact. I just want to remind everybody about the Don Buster meeting on uh, Wednesday morning, 7 a.m. Don Buster meeting Wednesday morning. Uh, Mickey, you have an announcement? Uh, Maybe, yes, um, maybe, first, first maybe. Tuesday. Just have a second. I'll, I'll repeat it. Uh, maybe first, first Tuesday. First okay, Tuesday meeting. It's September 4th. September 4th. Delinda, Delinda will be our speaker. Delinda will be the speaker. And it is at 1 o'clock. It's 1 o'clock. Brooklyn Baptist. Brooklyn Baptist Church. Okay. And the meals are 14. And I want to pledge again. I went by Dee's office and gave her a check and pledged my full support. And for the record, I am supporting. Thank you. All right, public announcements of uh, Mickey. Uh, Mickey, Mickey is officially supporting Dee Dee Vaughters. Our Republican and her. And her. Okay, just want to make sure. She brought paper and pencil. And the meal's fourteen dollars, Mickey, right? Fourteen dollars. Okay. Any other public announcements? Randy Page. Platform2012.com. 
and you can uh, go into it and, uh, through Facebook, Twitter, all hosts of social media, but we will leave, uh, we begin meeting on the 19th. So, so Randy Page, and I always think about Randy as being the uh, issues expert with the, with the state party in, in, in um, rules, but GOPplatform2012.com, and you can get to it on Twitter and Facebook. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, we got, we got a very important announcement here. Uh, Bill, yeah, announcement. Chairman, uh, a number of people have asked for the opportunity to have their name included on our materials as officially endorsing Bill, if you'll come up to the mic, I want everyone to hear this. She's, she's our nominee. Don't you, all right, we'll hear this. Uh, a number of people have asked to uh, have their name included on our official campaign materials as supporting Dee Dee, uh, and several people have approached me. Some of you don't have my contact information. If you want to have us add your name to our official you know, ads or things that we put out uh, listing all of those people endorsing Dee Dee, then just uh, call me. I'll give you my phone number. It's uh, Three nine nine zero seven eight four, and my email is bill at dd 4 senatecom Thanks. Thank you, thank you, Bill. I think someone else had their hand up. Wanted to make uh, a trade. Yes, ma'am. The South Carolina Federation of Republican Women are selling bumper stickers, and they say, and you can't really tell what it says because it's the clear kind that you put actually in your windshield. And it says, I am a free American. And you know, that's a South Carolina thing and it goes with the Republican creed. Along with this bumper sticker, you get an opportunity because you know in South Carolina, we get opportunities we don't do that R word. The opportunity is for a drawing for a thousand dollar gas card. Um, if you're interested in this opportunity to get a bumper sticker, um, they're $10. It's a $10 bumper sticker. But if you're interested, you can see me afterwards, or Kim, um, after. Thank you, thank you. Anyone else? PD. Yeah, just briefly, um, I got so sidebarred by the $1,000 check, thank you guys, that I forgot to mention that we are having a free um, concealed weapon permit class uh, one week from Saturday. And uh, if you are interested, if you would like to be licensed to carry, and you are currently, uh, see either myself or Bill after the meeting, and we'll get you guys signed up. And that's a free class, so thank you. Thank you. Thank and you. lunch will be provided from Sandy Run Barbecue. Wow. <laughs> well, look, before he gets mad at me, our, our parliamentarian has an important announcement. My name is Herbert May, and I don't normally speak at meetings unless y'all are having a big disagreement. Parliamentarian, I'm certainly supposed to be neutral. So I'm certainly going to step aside in my comments to you as parliamentarian uh, and speak to you more directly and personally. I want to talk with you about an election that is something that we don't normally deal with here because it's selected directly by the legislature, a joint session of the House and Senate. This past year, the legislature, it was decided and voted on that they were going to have, for the first time in many years, three additional circuit court judges. They're also going to add six family court judges, and it's going to be elected during this next legislative session. There are a lot of rules that you have to go by. One of the things is that you can't seek the commitment of a legislator prior to being screened. Uh, in order to run as a judicial candidate, there is a judicial screening commission that goes through, and anybody that wants to apply, the judicial screening commission goes through and screens them, no matter how many candidates apply. Only three people are screened out and are allowed to go forth and seek commitments from members of the legislature. So to the extent that there are any members of the legislature here, I certainly am not seeking any commitment from any sitting member of the legislature, but I did want to take a little bit of time tonight to just announce formally my candidacy. I'm going to run for circuit court at large seat 16. And to tell you a little bit about uh, my association involvement here in Lexington County, I have been working as an assistant solicitor for Donnie Myers for the past 18 years. And prior to that, I had the privilege of clerking for two circuit judges here. Uh, Judge Julius Baggett, who went on and was elected in 1976. I was his last law clerk. And Mark Westbrook from here in Lexington County, I was his first law clerk. And Judge Westbrook was one of the only people, uh, I guess, in the history of South Carolina that ever died while he was serving as a circuit judge. He was very tragically killed uh, returning from court in McCormick County. 
He was certainly a dear person to me, and I made a firm commitment to him. When I got enough gray in my hair uh, for somebody to take me seriously, it was certainly something that I was going to pursue. And I intend to do that during this next legislative session. I just want to tell you how important it is. Uh, when Judge Baggett went on uh, back in 1976, they added some additional judges for the first time. Uh, there were 16, and there still are 16 judicial circuits in the state of South Carolina. Lexington County only has two circuit court judges. When Judge Baggett was elected in 1976, it went from one judge in the circuit, the 11th circuits made up of Lexington, McCormick, Edgefield, and Saluda counties. Uh, the last time that any judges were added from this area was 1976, so I will tell you that's extremely significant. It is significant to everyone here, certainly in Lexington County and in this circuit, because if you're talking about something that directly impacts the citizens, how much courts you have, the access to justice, the backlog that our court system has, it is an extremely important election for anyone here in the 11th Judicial Circuit. Uh, to my knowledge, thus far, I'm the only candidate from this area. Um, it's going to be a significant election. Uh, judges typically serve uh, every, they're elected every six years, but if someone goes on, I'm 46 and I can serve until I was 72. And so that would be a tremendous asset for us here in the 11th Circuit to have an additional judge here. They're never going to add any resident judges' seats. The only way that we're ever going to have any additional judges in this area is for somebody to seek an at-large seat because they're adding three at-large seats this time and it's going to be extremely significant. I certainly am going to need the help of the Lexington County Republican Party. And at the appropriate time, if you've got time to talk with me, uh, it's a, an at-large seat. Usually there's great deference given to a local delegation. If you're electing a resident judge, usually most of the legislators around the state give pretty great deference to what the local delegation wants to do. But when you're talking about an at-large seat, that means that you have to directly seek at the appropriate time the commitments of every House member and every senator across the state. So I'm certainly going to need your help, and I would certainly appreciate it. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Absolutely. We don't have popular elections in South Carolina. They're elected by the legislature. And uh, like I said, it used to be anybody could go down and file and run as a circuit judge or a family court judge. But several years ago, they changed that process. So now if you intend to file, like I've just filed this past week, but and the filing closes. We're not allowed to vote for you. You no. have to get the legislature. I have to get the legislators to vote for me. And that's why I'm speaking to the election to the Republican Party, because uh, this is certainly a powerful political force in South Carolina, and many of the members here in the Lexington Republican Party know legislators, House members, and senators across the state. So, so that's why I'm going to need everybody's help. That the people don't vote for the judges? That's it's, correct. It's always been Virginia and South Carolina, are my understanding, are I, I think the only two states that still have uh, election by joint session of the House and Senate. Uh, they're popularly elected in some states. Uh, they are elected by gubernatorial appointment with uh, sometimes the advice and consent of the Senate in other states, but we have direct election of judges here in South Carolina, and they're elected by the uh, a joint session of the House and the Senate. So in other words, what you're saying is sure. At the appropriate time. <laughs> now, the report of the Judicial Screening Committee is not until January the 15th. And assuming that I'm successful and can make my way through the judicial screening process and I'm screened out on January the 15th, that gives you from January the 15th until January the 30th to seek commitments. And before that time, I will ask you, don't approach any legislators and ask them prior to that time, but I would like to know certainly um, uh, if you know House members and legislators in other parts of the state, I would certainly, I'm going to need the help of the election Republican Party. Follow this. Don't jump the gun. Don't help me that way. You disqualify me in doing that. I would be disqualified in doing that. So, but I did want to announce the filing deadline closes uh, on the 9th, and uh, I filed this past week, and uh, it's certainly important. Nothing impacts our citizens anymore. Uh, I mean, it's important that we have conservative people that are going to follow the law, and uh, with my background and experience, I certainly think I can uh, fill that bill if that's something that's important to you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's give him a round of applause.
before I call for uh, ask for a motion to adjourn, remember to go back and see Bill Brown and Sheely in the back and shake hands with them before you leave. Uh, you know, even though we argue to all sorts of things in Lexington County, this is the best county in the state. The best people in the state live right here. So uh, I want to thank all of you for coming out tonight. And uh, the chair would now entertain a motion to, to adjourn. So moved. Uh, second. All right. We're adjourned. Thank you, folks. Thank <laughs> you.